Hey guys, welcome to the kitchen. I'm Wanda and today we're going to be talking about spaghetti squash. Now Danny and I did these little small wonder spaghetti squash. This is what we grew this year from Hall's Tools. We ended up with right at 60 of these small ones off three or four plants. And the biggest ones are about this size, the rest of them about this size. So they're pretty good size. When I cut these open, I used half of one for a meal for Danny and I. And I've started using them for uh, making like lasagna, but it's only a spaghetti squash, basic thing. So today, can it be done? Can you can a winter squash like spaghetti squash or pumpkins? Now, lots of you do, and you've used your own recipes, but I looked in the ball books. I have a 1960 ball book. Yes, you can. These three, 1991, 99, and 2010, says it's best to freeze them. What I did, I took two of these and I put them in the oven like this for 20 minutes and took it out. Um, this one I'm working on. I have a hard time cutting them when they're like this. So, let's see if we can get this off, out of the way. When they're fresh or cured, they're hard. This is hard. I baked it 20 minutes. You see this? Easy peasy. It opens up. The inside is still firm. And what I did, I cut it in four pieces. And I scooped this out. And then it just peels right under the skin. Just peels off. Very easy. And when I got it all peeled, I started cutting in pieces to go in my jar. And you see that? It just peels right off. And you have a good piece here. And it cuts very well. What I did, I sliced it in pieces like this. Then I cut it in half again. That's, that's my chunks. I packed them in my jar. My jar has about right at half of one of these or maybe a little over half in the jar. And I put it in these chunks and I worked it where it fit down in there pretty good. What I'm going to do is put half a teaspoon of salt and boiling water and we're going to process this. Okay, so let's talk about processing. The three newer books says to freeze it. Pumpkin, winter squash, all says to freeze it. 1960 ball book. Pumpkin and winter squash. It says wash them when they're firm, ripe, either the pumpkins or squash. So this is a winter squash. That's what it's called, a spaghetti squash. You can cut it in large pieces, discard the seed, steam it or bake it until it's reasonably tender. So what I did, I didn't cut it ahead of time. I went ahead and baked it. And it, it's, you saw how it cuts. It's reasonably tender. It says scoop out the pulp and stuff, add boiling water and salt to your jars. One teaspoon of salt per quart. I'm using pints, so we're going to do half a teaspoon of salt. And then it says process pints 60 minutes and quarts 80 minutes with 10 pounds of pressure. Now, it's even talking about making it like a, a pie filling is what it's talking about in there. That you could cook this into a pulp, mush it down and water it down some and then pressure can it. That's one reason most people in the new books do not say to process it because it's usually in a pulp. It's like ready for pie filling. We're going to do mine in chunks. I want these where when I cook it in the jar, the reason I'm doing it this way, this should make spaghetti across here. We should have little small pieces of spaghetti when I do it. We're, this is an experiment. We're going to try it. Will it work? 
not 100% sure, but this is what we're going to do. I'm going to sit here, finish peeling, and you see, I showed you how easy it is to peel this spaghetti squash after it's been baked 20 minutes in the oven. Now, if you want it more done, like smushier, but you, I don't know that you could handle it. This is almost, I mean, it's still firm. I like it that way. Doesn't take any time to peel it. And I'm not running a full canner of these. I only did two spaghetti squash. These have not been processed, so I'm going to put them back in the floor. I have about 50 more. We've eaten a few. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and clean these and finish with this, get my jars ready. We're going to get the canner ready. We're going to process this and we'll come back and show you what it's looking like after it's out of the canner, what the jar is going to look like. And in a day or so, we're going to open a jar and we're going to see what this jar tastes like and how, how it comes apart or is it how it does. And then we're going to leave some of the jars for a month, two months, because I should have maybe three to five jars. I don't know how many two squash is going to do. But ever how many jars, I'm going to run the counter for that many. And then we're going to check them every month or so. So can it be done? Winter squash, spaghetti squash, we're fixing to find out. I have my jars hot and we're going to put them here now I am not going to put a funnel or anything on this I'm simply going to start packing into my jars and seeing that it falls in there reasonable and we don't have too much issues but plenty of room for water that's how I did it earlier. I just kind of watched how I packed it. Because I want plenty of water in here to um, finish cooking it and processing it. And I think that's going to be enough. I'm going to leave it at that. That should be enough for one meal for Danny and I. Now, we're going to put our salt in there. And this is half a teaspoon of salt. And we're going to finish it with boiling water. And we're going to come up to the regular spot with boiling water. I'm going to debubble a little and see if I need to add any more. I'm not going to try to undo what I've got going on here. You can see the squash is down in the water. It's covered. It looks like pieces of um, pumpkin or something like that. But it is spaghetti squash. And we're going to wipe the rim. I debubbled. We wipe the rim and put it in our canner. And we're going to do the other jars that way. All right, we're going to wipe our rims. Really good. And you can use vinegar, water, whatever you're used to doing. These new ball, sure tight lids, say not to put them in boiling water, so I've just got them laying on my cabinet. We're going to put them in place on a hot jar filled with hot stuff, hand tight. That's it. Now we're going to put them in the canner. All right, we had four jars out of the two spaghetti squash. I'm going to put the lid on. We've got 
the stove on high. We're going to put the pounds, 10 pounds of pressure on this after steam starts coming up. We've vented it. We know that it's okay. We'll put this on. This will pop up. Then we will take and set the timer for 60 minutes when it starts jiggling. All right, it's been over an hour. This has went down. We can remove that. Always turn it away from you so you don't have steam or water on you. And that is what it's looking like. It's been three days since I canned spaghetti squash. And then that beautiful? Look at that. It looks great. It looks like pumpkin, basically, in a jar. It is a winter squash. But we want to know what does it taste like, how does it do, is it like spaghetti, or is it just like another squash. So today, I'm going to be opening a jar. We're going to be using our salsa. That's some Danny and I put up in that beautiful has our peppers, onions, and tomatoes, and garlic, and all that in there. And we're going to be using some of our ground beef that Danny and I purchased. We had a half a beef done, and we're going to be using it. I've already got it brown, but this is what was left we're going to use for something later. Now, I've already got the half of a pound of ground beef done. Um, we're going to open the spaghetti squash and drain it. And it, it had to go for an hour. It smells good. It looks good. So now we're going to drain. Once I've drained it, we're just going to put it in this bowl. And I'm going to take a fork and see what we can do with it. If it's going to be like spaghetti, if it's going to be kind of mushy, what it's doing. To me, it looks like it's just gonna mush like any pumpkin wood. It's not gonna be spaghetti. It just turns into... So if you're looking for spaghetti, that's probably not gonna be it, but it's a way to have spaghetti squash. How to can it, but Basically, an hour and a half is going to be mush. It's not going to be spaghetti. It's going to be squash. Okay, so that answers that question. It's not going to be spaghetti, but it's going to be something we can use. What I'm going to do, add a little salt. Add a little pepper. Open the salsa. Guys, I don't want a lot of salsa because this is not a lot of spaghetti squash. And we're just going to mix that together. So you've got your peppers, onions, tomatoes, and garlic all in there. And I'm not going to just mash it together. I just wanted it kind of... where it looks like that. Now... This is the ground beef that we had, and you see there's no moisture in there. I did not drain this. I did not have to. This is 100% beef, nothing added, and you see there's no moisture. When you have true ground beef, there is nothing added to it to give it the watery substance that you end up with from bulk ground beef. Now we add that a little bit. And I'm not mashing the chunks up. I don't want them mashed. And this is what we end up with. It is going to be a casserole. And I'm going to put it in and we're going to cook it. We're going to add some cheese. Okay, I have this Pampered Chef bowl. And if you've not seen the new bowls, glass bowl that you can cook in, put in the refrigerator, whatever. This is perfect for this size of what I'm wanting. And once I've cooked it and it's cooled off, 
the lid snaps on. I thought that was pretty cool. I have three sizes now and I'm really liking the lids. Now you don't put the lid on until it's cool because it is made out of plastic. I'm not going to spray this or anything. I'm just putting my meat mixture in here. And basically what you're doing is making a type of lasagna casserole, I guess. And since this did not turn into spaghetti, like you normally think of spaghetti, I'm just going to leave it in pieces and spread it out. Now you could have added cheese to this in the mix and on top, but I'm just putting cheese on top. I didn't add it into the mix there. And if you have other things that you like, uh, sour cream, anything like that that you like in your casserole, that would be the time to add it. Any other flavorings, whatever. And we're going to pop this into the oven. Probably go about 30 to 40 minutes till this kind of browns and we're ready to eat. Alright guys, this is out of the oven. I'm going to be trying it. The cheese melted real good. Actually, everything in this is done. Um, all you're doing is meshing your stuff together. That's the beauty of having it, the spaghetti squash this way. Even though it's not spaghetti, we determined that it did not turn into spaghetti. You couldn't break it apart like spaghetti. It is squash. So, Everything's done. You brown your ground meat, everything there. Add your cheese. It's simply another squash dish. You can do this in quarts. Um, we give you more for our family. But for Danny and I, this is a perfect size. It just pretty much tastes like it could be kind of like lasagna, I guess, or a casserole with squash and meat and salsa and cheese. You can add all kinds of um, Italian seasonings. You could add cumin, whatever you want to flavor it and have the perfect dish. 20, 25 minutes, toast everything, meshes everything together, and it's perfect. So, Cannon Spaghetti Squash, can it be done? Yes, it can. Um, do the new books recommend it? No, they do not. They recommend all you do with winter squash is to either preserve it like we do fresh and just store it for three to six months, use it fresh, or you freeze it. But the older ball books do say you can can it in chunks like I did and use it. So it's not really spaghetti. It is a winter squash and that's probably one way I will preserve ours for future use. So thank you guys from Deep South Homestead.